This can be measured using a simple test called the slump test. Let me show you the procedure. Slump cone test is a simple and popular test extensively used at sites to assess the workability of the concrete mix. The test should be conducted at the commencement of the concreting operations or whenever the workability of the concrete changes. The apparatus for conducting the slump test essentially consists of a metallic mold in the form of a frustum of a cone with a base plate. A steel tamping rod of 16 mm diameter and 60 cm height is to be used for compacting. The internal surface of the mold should be thoroughly cleaned of moisture and any hardened concrete before commencing the test. The mold is placed on a smooth, horizontal, rigid and non-absorbent surface. It is then filled in four layers with the thickness of each layer being approximately one-fourth of the height of the mold. Each layer should be tamped 25 times evenly using the rounded end of the tamping rod such that strokes are uniformly distributed over the cross section. After the top layer is tamped, the concrete is leveled with a trowel so that the mold is filled exactly to the top. The mold is then removed by raising it gradually. The concrete will subside. This subsidence is known as slump. This operation shall be carried out without any jerks or vibrations and within a period of two minutes after completion of final tamping. The difference in level between the height of the mold and that of the highest point of the subsided concrete is measured. The subsidence measured is the slump of the concrete. The slump may either be a true slump, a sheer slump or a collapsible slump. The true slump is the desired form of slump that we require. In harsh mixes, the concrete slides down in an inclined plane. This is known as shear slump. In collapse slump, the concrete collapses as soon as the cone is removed. It usually occurs in very wet mixes. The concrete demonstrating a shear or collapse slump is considered unsatisfactory. In case of slump results beyond the specified... <laughs> mix proportion needs to be adjusted, especially the water content. The slump can also be varied by changing the proportion, size and combination of the various sizes of the aggregates. Compressive strength is one of the critical properties of concrete to be tested as it is linked with load carrying capacity and durability. Come. Let's see how the cubes for compressive strength test are cast. This is a simple test consisting of cast cubes of concrete tested on a compression testing machine after the concrete hardens. Most of the desirable properties of concrete are qualitatively related to its compressive strength. Generally, specimens are cast in steel or cast iron molds of 150 by 150 by 150 millimeters, the mold should have rigid connection with base essential in order to prevent the leakage of mortar during compaction. The cube is filled with fresh concrete in three layers and compacted well using standard tamping rod of 16 millimeter diameter and 60 centimeters long. Each layer should be compacted with 35 blows. The tamping rod should enter the previous layer while tamping the subsequent layer. After compacting the top layer, the surface is made in flush with edges of mold using a trowel. The mold is covered immediately with damp hessian cloth and left undisturbed for 24 hours. 
Site specimens should be stored in 22 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius. The cubes should be marked with suitable identification number when slightly hardened to facilitate easy identification at different ages. After 24 hours, the mold is stripped off and the cubes are to be stored in water for further curing till it is taken out just prior to testing. Curing water temperature should be maintained at 24 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. The cured cubes are then tested on a compression testing machine after 3, 7 or 28 days.